Hello guys, this is Adip. Welcome to my channel Movement Science, where I simplify biomechanics and lot of ortho topics with Joe. So if you are new to this channel, consider subscribing. Also check me out on Instagram, where I post pictures of my notes and also put out daily MCQs with which you can brush up your biomechanics. The reference time for all the topics that I'm going to cover will be mentioned down in the description. So check that out and let's get started. In this video, we are going to talk about the unilateral stance of the hip joint. Last video was about the bilateral stance where we got the basics, right? So now in this video, we will be talking about the unilateral stance, how the force is distributed. And then we will see how to reduce the force in the hip joint in unilateral stance. Okay. What are the different techniques and which is the best technique? So with that, let's start with the topic. So before we go into the calculation of the forces, I first want you to understand the diagram over here and see what are the forces that are acting in this diagram so that we understand what are the types of forces that are acting over here. So starting with the HAT over here, that is the head, arm and trunk we discussed about in the last video that is coming straight from top, which is passing through your center of gravity, right? And this purple line over here is the HAT movement arm that is from the axis of the hip joint to the perpendicular force that is the moment arm, right? So torque equals force into moment arm as we discussed in the last part. So I'll write it down over here. Torque equals your force or uh, W that is weight into your moment arm, right? So this is the moment arm for the weight over here. And that is the torque that is created over here. And then the second part is the abductor force. Now we'll keep this aside for now. When we come to the lateral lean, we'll talk about this in more depth. And there is the abduction momentum that is formed over here. I'll talk about this in a while. Okay. So let's start with the main compression that is seen at the hip joint. So that is right hip joint compression is seen. And this force at the right hip is divided into two parts. That is your two third of the body weight. Okay. And if you want to measure this force on the right hip, how do you calculate it? It is the two third of the body weight that is your HAT we discussed in the last part. And then apart from the HAT in unilateral stance, you will also count for the other leg, right? In bilateral stance, you weren't counting for that. But now since you are in a unilateral stance, this will also add on to the HAT that will be your one sixth of the body weight. How? Two third is the whole body, right? So one third was given to your legs, if you remember, right? So out of that one third, if you divide the one third into half, that is one leg, that will be your one sixth of the body weight. That is your other limb. So if you add all of this weight, that is the, your body weight plus weight of your leg, it will be five sixth of your body weight, right? Almost whole your body weight, except the one part that is your other leg, right? The weight bearing leg. So five sixths of the body weight is the total weight that you will be having on your right hip. So if we are clear till here, let's go on to the next part. That is, there are two types of forces that are seen at the hip joint. There is the compressive force of the gravity that we see that we discussed over here. But then there is also another force that is the torque at the body weight. Now, what is this torque? Torque is a turning force that we talked about in our last videos too, right? So that is the uh, weight into moment arm that I was talking about. So there is an adduction torque that is present at the hip joint. What do I mean by this? So this is your femur, right? And this is your pelvis over here. So what happens is when the weight is coming from top, the pelvis will tend to fall down. Now, this is prevented by your abductors on the other side, which cause abduction of your femur, right? Abduction of your femur. They basically maintain this angle between your pelvis and your femur. So to prevent the collapse of the pelvis downward, your abductors on this, on this side, they'll be activated and they'll keep the hip joint in the right place, right? So the adduction torque is counterbalanced by your hip abductor activity. The hip abductors on this side, they'll activate and they'll maintain this position. So that is the second force that is the turning force or the 
torque that is seen at your hip joint so there is a compressive force and then there is a torque force this torque force is created by your abductors which prevent collapse of your pelvis simple so the total forces if we see at the hip joint will be the compressive forces that is the 5 6 of the body weight and also that there, there will be the abduction torque that will be created by your abductors so these are the forces that we see at the weight bearing hip joint in a unilateral stance okay so till now we are clear about what are the forces that are seen in the hip joint now let us see how to reduce these forces on the hip joint in unilateral stance you can reduce these forces by three ways you can do it by weight loss you can do it by compensatory lateral lean of the trunk you will bend your trunk slightly laterally or you can do it by the cane that is use of a stick on the ipsilateral meaning same side or contralateral meaning opposite side so talking about the weight loss compression at the hip joint is three times the body weight if we see this calculation over here basically what it will get us to is that when there is a compression at the hip joint the compression force if we measure it it will be three times your body weight okay so this three times your body weight has an interesting way to look at it as in if you reduce your body weight by one kg it will be multiplied into three times right so if you reduce one kg of weight it will reduce the weight on your hip joint or the pressure on your hip joint by three times so that's a big advantage we have to reduce the forces on the hip joint that is by weight loss okay so weight loss is pretty simple right you reduce one kg it will be multiplied into three times and it's much more efficient way of reducing the weight or the compression on the hip joint going to the next part that is the compensatory lean of the lateral trunk now this is where things can get a little tricky but don't worry i've tried to make it as simple as possible so the torque we are talking about of the hip joint over here is very important concept first for that we need to understand what torque really is so if you take this pen and if i fix this point at the pen and then hit this pen over here it will go around like this right if i hit it like this it will go around but if with the same force if i hit the pen over here it won't go as much far why is this this is because your moment arm is reduced over here so basically torque is that is the turning force is equal to the force that i'm applying which is constant into the moment arm that is the distance from the axis right so this is the basic concept of the torque now with compensatory lean what we do is we basically change the moment arm over here so the lateral lean helps to reduce the dr that is your moment arm let's look at this so this is where we come back to this diagram again so this is the moment arm that i was talking about right torque into weight which is constant hat into the moment arm so with the lateral lean what do we do we reduce this moment arm we try to reduce the moment arm let's see how so if you take joe over here this is your axis right axis that we talked about over here and from the axis this is the distance right from here till here this is the distance and the hat is coming straight down from here that's why we take the perpendicular distance from your axis okay so now what is happening is now with the lateral lean of the trunk your jaw will try to lean his trunk slightly on the lateral side so with the lateral lean of the trunk what will happen this force that i was talking about won't be like this the gravity is going still straight through it so as the lateral lean keeps increasing this force that was going like this will keep coming closer right it will be closer the center of gravity will start coming closer to your axis from here hat will start going slightly more closer to the axis of the hip joint so with this that was over here as you start moving like this to to the lateral side the trunk lateral flexion the line of gravity will keep coming closer and as it comes closer the moment arm over here will be reduced right so this is how your lateral lean of the trunk brings the line of gravity closer to the axis of rotation and helps you 
reduce the momentum so i hope it's clear how your lateral lean of the trunk helps to reduce the momentum so now joe has a question over here why not bend completely so basically what he's saying is why shouldn't i bend completely like this till your line of gravity is passing right through the axis of rotation and what will happen the momentum will turn into zero right so here's a question over here that why not bend completely and make the momentum zero so that the torque will become zero if if i make the momentum zero zero into whatever the weight is the torque will become zero right so it's sorted there is no torque at the hip joint at all so there will be very less force at the hip joint but there is an exception over here this position is very high in energy demand it requires a lot of energy demand and there will be also excessive wear and tear of your lumbar spine just imagine you walking like this throughout the day what will happen first of all it's a lot of energy for your other muscles of the trunk to hold this position and on the other hand there will be also excessive wear and tear at your lumbar spine just to help your hip joint you will be creating a lot of other problems in your body so it's not feasible at all right so this is why lateral trunk bending excessively is not the best idea so till now what have we understood that the torque at the hip joint can be reduced by either reducing the weight that is weight loss or you can also reduce it by compensatory lateral lean that is uh, acting on the momentum but you can't do it completely because if you make the torque zero that is not the best position to be in because of the excessive wear and tear of the lumbar spine and also high energy demand but however reducing dr that is your momentum can help you reduce the weight on your right hip significantly that is around 50% of the weight can be reduced on the joint with this method and also there will be reduced pain in the arthritic patients and also patients with painful hip abductors now here this painful hip abductors is a very important line let me explain you how painful hip abductors can be helped by compensatory lateral lean so for that we'll have to go back to the diagram okay so over here to understand how hip abductors will be less painful we'll have to understand the concept of abduction versus the gravity okay so if you take your hip joint over here this is the femur and this is your pelvis what happens basically is when you are standing in your unilateral stance the pelvis will always tend to fall down because of the gravity right but what is the thing that keeps it up it is your abductor muscles simple so now this downward movement or the rotatory movement of your pelvis is your adduction torque right because adduction is occurring so this adduction torque is equal to the weight into your momentum correct which is the momentum over here the 10 cm long momentum that we are discussing from the hat so that is your first adduction torque that we are talking about and then to counterbalance this to prevent the falling of the pelvis what is happening your abductors are working that is your abductor activity i had mentioned over here right so your abductors are working so the hat force is countered by your abductor force which is produced by your abductor muscles right this so the w over here would be your abductor muscle force and the momentum over here would be the distance from your axis of the hip joint to the attachment of your abductor muscles right so that would be 5 cm so the momentum over here is 5 cm okay so this is the abductor torque that is force of the abductors into 5 cm and adduction torque will be force of the hat into 10 cm so if you see the gravity has a big advantage over here because the momentum is very big so your abductor muscles has to fight a weight which is multiplied into 10 times because the momentum is 10 cm now with lateral lean what will happen when your jaw will go for lateral lean this 10 cm of your moment arm will be reduced to around 5 cm it can be reduced significantly and this 10 cm when it becomes 5 cm it will be much more easier for your abductors to fight this force that is created 
by your gravity to fight the torque that is created by the gravity because momentum with lateral lean will be reduced and overall torque will be reduced hence your abductors will have to create much more lesser torque to fight to keep the pelvis in the right position right so this is how lateral lean of the trunk will reduce the pain in the hip abductors okay so that's how painful hip abductors will be helped by the less load on them due to the lateral trunk lean hence this compensation is very commonly seen in unilateral stance of the hip joint so now this was about the compensatory lateral lean now let's move on to the next method of reducing the pressure on the hip joint that is with the use of cane on the contralateral or ipsilateral side okay so coming to the last part of the video the contralateral versus the ipsilateral hip cane use and we will see which is the better version so obviously over here the contralateral is a better way of using the cane compared to the ipsilateral and we'll see why so first let's start with the ipsilateral side when you are holding it on the same side the forces will be reducing so there is reduction in forces that pass through your hip joint because the cane is taking some of the weight right simple enough if you are holding the cane over here the cane will be taking some of the hat that is coming and will be transmitting it to the ground hence hip won't have to take that much force it is it has less energy expenditure but the forces are still greater than the compensatory lean what do i mean by this when you are using compensatory lean the reduction of forces is by 50% right but over here it's not that effective the structural stress reduction can take place and approximately 15% of the body weight can be uh, transmitted through your cane so that's all the 15% body weight will be transmitted it is not as effective as your compensatory lean right so that takes us to the other side that is the contralateral side when you are holding the cane on the other side it is definitely better now why is it better it's the same cane that you are using right it's nothing different it's just on the opposite side so how does it help so it takes up weight that is same weight that we were talking about but it also provides a strong counter torque from the opposite side so now over here when you are transmitting weight from the other side again if you see this is the axis and this is the force that is uh, the cane is putting from the ground so what is happening the moment arm if you see of the cane it's way further away from your pelvis right this was the moment arm of your hat that is coming but cane is taking up force from the body and this will help to increase the moment arm so much more because it's so much farther away from your hip joint right so this torque from the opposite side will be way higher because of its high moment arm so this is why it is much more effective in taking up the weight so that's the basic giveaway of the contralateral use of the cane compared to the ipsilateral now there are some studies and uh, many research done in this area which are not that clinically relevant but still it's important for us to have an idea about so i try to condense it down to few lines so that you have a slight understanding about it so there was discrepancy seen in the calculation and the actual value so if you calculate all the forces we'll get a value right but the actual value that you measure at the hip prosthesis so there was difference between them and this difference was quite high so how is it so that when we calculate something uh, it is a certain value but when we actually check what is the value over there it's very different now this was attributed to the latissimus dorsi activity on the other side so when the latissimus dorsi is activating over here because you are pushing the cane down right so there is depression of the shoulder and with depression of the shoulder there will be latissimus dorsi activity over here so when that is happening that will create some amount of compression at the hip joint which adds to the compressive forces over here so this is why there was some discrepancy that was seen in the calculations which is which has been proposed at the research level so with that we finish up this topic what did we cover in this topic we saw unilateral stance what are the forces that are there there is a 5 6 of the body weight which is a compressive force and also there is the abduction torque this is the total forces that are present at the hip joint then we saw how these forces can be reduced by weight loss 
then by compensatory lean, lateral lean of the trunk and then the canus. What did we see in the compensatory lean? We saw that this is a method wherein you try to reduce the moment arm which will put less stress on your painful abductors and also the hip joint. Also Joe had an argument that why not reduce the moment arm totally to zero so that the whole torque becomes zero but that is not possible because of the high energy demand and also excessive wear and tear of the lumbar spine. So that was the compensatory lean technique. Then we went to the cane, right? Ipsilateral and contralateral side. On ipsilateral side, we saw that it's helpful. It reduces the force by 15% around that much, but it is not as effective as contralateral side because contralateral side, the cane is way away from the axis of rotation because of which it is able to produce much more higher counter torque which helps to reduce the forces on the hip joint, right? Then we also saw about the discrepancy in the value and which was attributed to activity of the latissimus dorsi causing some compression at the hip joint. So with that, we finish off the topic. That's all for today, guys. Thank you for watching. If you like my content, please share it with your friends. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and please like the video as it really helps me out. And also let me know in the comment section what other videos you would like me to cover.